Welcome back to the Coding Circus. Today we are going to expand on some of the events that we learned in our last lesson. In our last lesson, we were looking at creating some methods such that when we grabbed our paintings, it changed the message at the bottom of the screen. So we could use that if we wanted to set up a gallery and set up all kinds of different paintings in that gallery and just allow us to describe each of the paintings in the gallery. Today, we're gonna to take that a little bit further. We're gonna add in the ability for the objects to sense when they collide with each other. So for example, we're gonna start with a beach ball and a basketball. And if the basketball touches the beach ball, we're gonna get a message. And if the beach ball touches the basketball, we're gonna get a message. Collision in computer science and also in this VR world is gonna be really important for us as we move forward because we're gonna to wanna to create some kind of games and different projects and it's gonna be very dependent upon objects knowing when they're in contact with other objects. Now, when we talk about collision, there's two types of collision. There's collision in the world where we can make it so the viewpoint, which is the, the walking interaction, where we have the little hand floating in front of us, or even without the little hand, and just the screen moving, that kind of virtual character, we can make it so they can't run into walls. Or when they do run into walls, it stops them. So that's one kind of collision. That's like a world-level collision. And we can make it so you can't walk into the, the basketball or you can't walk into the beach ball. A different kind of collision is what we're talking about when we have objects colliding that are in the world. And that's what we're gonna focus on today, just the objects colliding. We'll look at collision in terms of a uh, game level coll collision where you can't walk through walls uh, at, a at a later date. So let's dive right in and look at some code. So the first thing we're gonna to have to do is do our imports like we normally do. And I'm gonna import the grabber because I wanna be able to grab uh, the beach ball and the basketball. And I'm gonna add a new line which we haven't added before. This enables physics. Now we've kept physics off for now. Now this doesn't mean that the beach ball and the basketball are gonna just drop to the ground. We're gonna, there's something that we're gonna to do to prevent that from happening. But when you enable physics, you set up a whole series of methods and procedures and variables that Vizard has and Python has built in that allow it to simulate and model how things interact in the physical world. So it's not just gravity. It's, it's all things related to the physical world. So we're going to do something a little bit different with our methods. Um, we're going to look at our two grabber methods that we had. We had on grab and on release. We put those in. And we said on grab, when we grabbed something, if the thing that we grabbed is the beach ball, we're gonna say beach ball. If the thing that we grabbed was the basketball, we're gonna say it's the basketball. And I added in something a little bit uh, different. Uh, when I drop something, it's gonna say um, what I dropped. Now you could do that just by saying dropped, by putting in a text message when you release it. But I wanted to add in the ability to also know what I dropped. So if the thing I released was equal to beach ball, then I'm gonna say drop beach ball. And if the thing I released was equal to a basketball, I'm gonna say I dropped the basketball. Now we're gonna add in a new method that will deal with a different kind of event and we're gonna call it on collide. Now, Python doesn't know exactly what collided. All it knows is that two things collided. So it sends um, a object to this method that keeps track of the two things that collided or intersected. And it's object one 
and object two. Those are the two names of the two objects that have collided. So if object two is a basketball, then I'm going to say the basketball hits the beach ball. If object two is the beach ball, then I'm going to say the beach ball hits the basketball. You could also test for object one and say if object one is equal to the basketball, but it switches the logic. At that point, it's going to be beach ball hits basketball and object one uh, basketball hits beach ball. So it, you could do it however you want. If you want to switch it and play with those two kind of things to see the difference between the two, feel free. Uh, but for now, I think this works pretty well. Okay, so that's the end of our, our new method. That's it. We, we now need to handle that method. I'm going to put in my viz connect go. Um, I should have probably put that up here. But actually, no, we'll put it down here underneath the methods. That way we know the methods are loaded. So this is going to run my wizard world. And now I'm going to set up my callback events. Now remember what a callback is. That is triggered by something that happens in the virtual world. So we had our first callback we looked at yesterday or the last lesson. And it was a grabber event. So when my grabber tool that we built into the viz connect config file grabs something, we should run the method on grab. Now we could, could have called this method on grab anything we wanted to, but we called it on grab because it makes sense. It makes sense to, to use names that say what they are. Then we also did another callback method Again, reacting to an event when Viz, when Viz gets an event, when something happens, when the grabber releases something, we're going to run the method on release. So these callbacks really are reacting to things that happen in the world. And then our new one. This one, there's a couple different options to choose from. There's uh, a collide event, there's a collide begin event, and then there's a collide end event. Uh, the collide event is really for our world level collisions when anything collides with anything else. Um, we're going to look at collide begin event so that way as soon as the collision happens we're going to look at it because otherwise the collision is really continuously happen. You know if we, we collide two things together and they're overlapping collide event means that they're continuously happening and we're going to continuously see uh, whatever uh, response that we asked for on the screen and we don't want to kind of make it go on forever. So we're just going to do collide begin event and again I have my method here that I called on collide. I probably should have used camel case here. Let's go back and fix that on collide. I'm going to go up here and we have to make sure these names match. But it just goes to show you, you can call it anything you want. You could call it Happy Bunny Days if you wanted to, but that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Okay, now we're going to do some of the things that we normally do. We're going to add in our world. This time I created a world that's very similar to the last world we had, only I just called it Collide World. It's still going to be that big blue box. Uh, I'm going to set up a message on our viz screen. We did this before, so I'm going to create a variable called my message and just uh, we'll just say my sports room. How about that? Okay. Because it's going to have a basketball and a beach ball in it. And I'm going to put that message on the screen using my viz.addText. And now I'm going to add in my basketball. And then we're going to add two new things to the basketball um, that we haven't typically added to an object. Okay, so we're adding our basketball just like we normally do. Viz.addChild, put the name of the file, put its position and scale it. Now you could also add the object directly to the inspector and reference it using um, the, the environment.get, uh, I think it was called getChild. Um, and find it that way. But we're going to do it this way. We're going to add the file in just because I like to be able to add in multiples of the same thing if I would like to later. 
and it gives me the ability to position things on the screen um, on the fly in code, which is sometimes useful. So here's the first new line we're adding in for our basketball. We're adding in a mesh. Now this collide mesh, imagine it as like a net that you can't see that goes around the basketball. And when the basketball collides with something, this is gonna be kind of like its sensors that it knows it, it uses this to collide with something. Now, we have to tell Vizard and Python that when it does collide with something, we gotta kind of raise a flag and say, hey, you know, a collision happened. So we're going to enable the collision notify. I wanna keep hitting the wrong key. There we go. So we're going to enable viz.collide notify. So this is a constant that viz has that it will enable this flag that when a collision happens, it will notify, but it's gonna be specific to the beach ball. Oops, this should say basketball. So that's it, we need those three statements in order to get our basketball to have a collision mesh around it and enable the notify. If we don't have this last line here, enable notify, other things will be able to collide into the basketball and those things will register that a collision has occurred, but the basketball would not if we did not put this enable here. In order for other things to collide into the basketball though, we would still need the collide mesh. So the first one allows the basketball to collide into other stuff and other stuff collide into it. The second one allows the basketball to say, hey, I've been collided with. Now we're gonna add our beach ball and do the same thing. I'm gonna move it slightly away from the basketball, put it in a slightly different position and put our collide mesh on it and put our enable our notify as well. Okay. So now we're gonna add in our grabbable objects like we've done in the past. Just adding it to our list of grabbable objects. We're gonna add our beach ball and our basketball. We're gonna set up our grabber using the grabber tool that we have through Vizard, and we're gonna set the grabbable items to be equal to our list grabbable objects. So let's go ahead and run this and see what we get. Hopefully I typed everything right and don't get an error. Oh, looks, uh, oh, it looks like my world failed to load. Oh, I know why, because I'm in the wrong file. Let me do this again. Here we go, let's run this one because it's just in the wrong folder. Here we go. And now I have my world and I wanna fly forward using my W key. I find that it makes it easier if you just full screen this, especially at this point and you're trying to grab stuff. Otherwise your mouse is kind of off the screen and end up clicking off the screen and losing the mouse. So now watch what happens. I'm gonna grab the beach ball and I got a message on the wizard screen that says beach ball grabbed. I'm gonna let go of the beach ball and it says dropped beach ball. Beach ball, dropped beach ball. I'm gonna go over and do the same thing to the basketball basketball, drop basketball. Now I'm gonna grab the basketball and I'm gonna to touch it to the beach ball. And you see how it says basketball hits beach ball. Now the basketball can go all the way inside the beach ball. It can go through it because we did not add in a collision um, effect, any kind of physics effect for the beach ball hitting the basketball. We'll do that later. And then I can come over here and grab the beach ball, take the beach ball, and it says beach ball hits basketball. So Vizard knows the object that is colliding into which object. That's the whole point of having that order of object one and object two. So object two, we wanna think of as the thing that we're grabbing and colliding into, um, object one. Like that. So there we go, we have our um, 
collision and we have our code that shows our collisions and our extra method. So we're gonna do some more methods and add in some more kind of features with the goal of being able to kind of play with these um, different sports balls and maybe throw them at some crates or kind of make a game out of it. That's kind of where we're headed. I hope you enjoyed this and pardon the sun that's in my eyes. I will see you next time.